Welcome to Make and Decorate, a podcast for makers who love to sew, quilt, knit, and decorate. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Make and Decorate with Stephanie podcast. I am Stephanie, your host. Today is the season finale episode for season five. Thank you so much for listening all through the season. And if you've been with me from the start, uh, I just, it fills my heart with joy to hear that when you guys let me know that. So I will be back with season six in early autumn as usual. On today's episode, the main topic is simple decor updates for summer. I will share some DIY home decor things you can make, some shopping ideas, and um, things that you need to bring the pros in for things you do not want to DIY. Let's start Starting with, with sewing and quilting. Uh, quilting is the same, but I did do uh, another project. I made another set of coasters from Minky Kim's first book. They are the ones that have the um, illustrated sewing embroidery by machine. And I did the first set mostly by machine. And this time on this set, I, I just went back to hand stitching it and uh, it works just the same. It, it looks better actually because I have more control with the hand stitching than I do with the sewing machine and they turned out great. I did quite a bit of mending for my husband. There has been a pile <laughs> since last fall and uh, he hasn't started asking for it until now. And so I I pulled out about four things and completed those in an, an evening, which, or no, actually over two evenings. And uh, it was fun. I, I kind of like it when I do have like a little sort of um, collection of those to do. Because then it doesn't feel like you're getting stuff out just to mend one thing. I actually have some of my stuff in there. I have like uh, some jeans that I need to hem for myself. Uh, and I have a denim jacket that I want to actually add embroidery to and kind of, you know, jazz it up. But for his jeans, this particular pair of jeans, I had already mended the back pocket uh, on the left side. And now... The back pocket on the right side at the corner had torn and was fraying, so I fixed that side. For his mendings, I typically keep it to just kind of like that sashiko stitching style, boro stitching, basically like that um, running stitch with, um, I used 12 weight thread so you could see it and uh, you know, on the uh, jeans, denim jeans, some of them have that really uh, nice gold colored thread. I have some of that. It's jeans thread. I used that for stitching. It looked really well. It turned out great. And actually, now that I think about it, I don't think it was 12 weight, but it you really could could notice it. Oh, I know why. <laughs> I doubled <laughs> I doubled the thread. So that's why it came out so visible cuz I really wanted it. It's visible mending. Uh and he likes it like that. So I think he feels like he's cool and hip. <laughs> uh so I had a few of uh pants to mend. Oh my gosh, and then a couple two pairs of his pajama pants that I made for him. He is so rough on clothes. It's I just don't even understand how things get just ripped so quickly after I make them something. And it's not due to fabrication on my part. They're very well made. They are reinforced with serger, finished serger stitching and a line of straight stitching on the seams. And sometimes triple stitching around because usually you do kind of do that extra stitching around that U part of the crotch pieces. I have mended those so many times. So this is kind of like the last mend. I told them this is going to be it because you have frayed this fabric so much that 
there's just going to be nothing left the next time. I guess they are kind of old. I must have made these about seven or eight years ago. So I guess they are holding up pretty well, considering. Yep. So uh, I, I did a pair of shorts mending, visible mending, and two pairs of jamma pants and one pair of jeans. So that was pretty productive. And while I am on the topic of mending clothes, I saw this morning on my local news, our weather person in the morning, Tracy Butler, had a little segment with Ginger Z, the weather person on Good Morning America. But Ginger has history with Chicago because she was here first. She was our weather caster meteorologist before she went to New York for Good Morning America. She knows Tracy Butler, but they did a segment not even related to weather. It was about clothing, and Ginger has been on this year-long not purchasing new clothes. It seems that Ginger is purchasing new to her clothing, but this clothing is used from thrift shops that she's purchasing. It was interesting to hear her talk about avoiding fast fashion She went on to explain that fast fashion is made to be disposable and not to last longer than a season or a year. And she also had a statistic that the average American purchases 16 new items of clothing per quarter. Here is my take on what she said. I do appreciate her doing these news segments and bringing attention to how harmful fast fashion can be to the environment and how we can purchase differently. Here is where it gets tricky. And I am weighing in on what she says about just buying clothes from thrift shops, because that was her only solution. So first of all, she is in one of the fashion capitals of the world. And thrift shops are a dime a dozen in New York. There are a good amount of thrift shops in large cities. Even here in Chicago, there are thrift shops options downtown. But once you get out into the suburbs, those options start to become scarce. I want to add two more ways that we can avoid fast fashion. One is to buy well-made quality clothing new. They are more expensive, but will last much longer than fast fashion. And there is no need to fill a closet with an excess of clothing that may be worn once or not at all, unless it's a special occasion. The second option is for those of us that can and actually like to make some of our own clothing. Making your own clothing, to me, equivocates to couture made by you. And actually, I have a third option. When clothing has come to the end of its lifespan or you grow tired of wearing it, you can deconstruct it and take parts of it and combine it with other clothes that you're deconstructing, like, you know, swapping out the sleeves, uh, changing the neckline. And you can also combine it with other things that you can make as me made clothing. I wasn't planning to talk about this today, but I just happened to see it on TV this morning. And before it slipped my mind, I wanted to share it with you. I think that I need to do a future episode on this next season. All right, back to regular programming. I have been starting to spend more time on my seedling plants and getting them ready to plant in the garden very, very soon. It is so exciting. We had a beautiful day last no, the week before last, and I spent some time outside cleaning up and preparing flower beds, um, training the wisteria vines to grow where I want them to grow, and getting rid of uh, some of the um, rogue vines that I do not want to take over my rose bushes. (laughs) So I did some of that, and then, of course, we switched back to cold and rainy weather uh, all of last week. So I've been working on my plants in, indoors, getting them ready. I have a tray of uh, summer squash plants and tomato plants uh, on my back. I've moved them to the back porch now, f- moved them from their comfy, warm 
um, heating mats and um, UV spa lights <laughs> and move them to the back porch to do what uh, is called hardening off. Uh, and that just kind of eases them into going out doors into the elements so that they will flourish and not go into shock and die. Uh, so um started those off first and I still keep planting new seeds. Then I've been transplanting seedlings that have outgrown their plug trays and planting new seeds in those empty plug trays. I've planted eucalyptus, more geraniums, a few weeks ago, I planted coleus seeds, and now they are super cute little seedlings. And I should have planted those earlier, but I ran out of room. I mean, I only have this little pantry and so much square inches uh, to work with in the winter uh, to plant seeds. So um, I just chose the ones that uh, would kind of germinate quick and grow. And some of the seed instructions say to you could plant them you know like maybe three weeks before the last frost so that's pretty much what um I think it said with the coleus I'm not sure but they're they're coming up nicely um but they're still like really really little right now uh so we'll see it's it's a lot of this is just experimentation for me right now I did learn last year to definitely plant my um uh, petunia seeds earlier so those did get planted in February and those are becoming nice little little plants right now oh uh, I have another seedling fail to tell you about the time seedlings did not make it I think that they might have been watered too much so I planted more thyme seeds last week hoping that these will work out if they don't I can always get them from the local nursery. Just because all of these plants are looking great and fresh and beautiful right now doesn't mean that they're going to make it all the way through to produce beautiful fruits and vegetables and tomatoes or whatever, flowers. So um, yeah, just taking it one day at a time. And that's it. I am trying a new subscription box. Really, I'm just doing one box. <laughs> and um, it's called Sakurako. It's a box with Japanese snacks, teas, and small home goods like chopsticks and ceramics handmade by traditional Japanese makers. Why did I think to do this? Or even, I didn't even know that it really existed. I knew that um, Japanese snack boxes existed because I have seen YouTube channels promote them. This one is different because you get these ceramics and other little home good items made by makers, Japanese makers. And every time I watch K-dramas and YouTube Japanese artisan channels, I really admire those beautiful ceramics and fabrics and the hand craftsmanship uh, by those skilled artisans. Included in the box is a 24-page culture guide exploring these monthly makers uh, themed articles and snack info because there are snacks <laughs> involved in the box as well. Also, I was excited about the tea, so I, I can't wait to see what teas I get because I love tea. Uh, and uh, they're hand packed and shipped directly from Japan. So the theme of this box is Sakura, and it is the theme of their May box. So when I get it, uh, I'll check it out and let you know. If you actually want to try this out yourself, it's sakuraco.com. I'll put the link in the show notes. I did get a $5 off on the first box, which helped as well. But I mean, this is not something that I'm going to maintain on a monthly basis. Um, I really wish that this would go quarterly because monthly things just start adding up and it's just too much for me at least. Uh, so I'll see how this first box goes. I have an update on my recent review of the Steamfast Mini Iron. Oh boy, are you ready for this? Okay. This is in reference to the Mini Iron that I had for the past eight years and then I dropped it and broke off the foot uh, and there wasn't a way for me to really fix it. Uh, and it was just, you know, unsafe. 
So at the end of March, I replaced it with a new one of the same model and brand. Last week, I received an email from Amazon that the iron has been recalled due to a safety hazard. The reason I'm bringing this up is I know that a lot of people have steam fast iron, mini irons, uh, and I just want to let you know what to look for if you have the steam, fa- the steam fast 717 mini iron. The irons that were made prior to 2017 are recalled if they have that short half inch bushing piece. 2017 and beyond, they corrected and made it to code, which is the bushing piece is over an inch long. If you have the iron, take a look at that. I still think it's a great little iron at a nice price. But here is another little revelation I recently had. Basically, I'm going to eat my words, so get ready. Here we go. After my fuss about the Aliso Mini Iron getting too hot, after it has been on for a while, and the grip being awkward... I find that I always pull it out to use it. So why? Uh, I took a more detailed look at what I didn't like about the iron and what I do like about it. And I think I just got used to using it. So the grip isn't as much of an issue, although I would say it did take a long time for me to get used to it. And when it does get too hot near the handle, It only really gets too hot when it's on the full heat setting, those three dots, which is the cotton setting, uh, which is what we need for quilt piecing. So when it gets to that point where I feel the heat creeping up, I'll just turn that heat dial down to the number two, especially during the times where I'm not really reaching for it that often. Um, I definitely always turn it down and that really does help. I also, the things I do like are that nice narrow point that um, is at the front of the iron. It easily separates the seams when pressing them open. Uh, And the steam feature is really powerful for a mini iron. But again, it's a little awkward to press those steam buttons on the sides until you get used to it. So it's just a new design. It's not something that we're innately used to based on how many irons have always been designed. Uh, So overall, function-wise, it does have an outstanding performance. Design-wise, it could be better. But in the end, uh, I actually do prefer the Oliso Mini Iron um, due to its power And to be honest, this should really have no bearing on a decision for functionality, but I love the color and the aesthetic look to the mini Oliso iron. I do tend to go with notions and tools for their aesthetic appeal as well as their functional use. So there you have it. Let's go over some of what I've been watching. Hulu. Um, and it's probably on Disney Plus and the National Geographic channel if you get it. There's a new show out called Secrets of the Elephants. This is a four-episode documentary show, and it is narrated by Natalie Portman. Each episode is about a specific type of elephant, and I learned a lot actually. I, I did I always thought that there were just the African elephants and the Asian ones, but there are they went over four different types. So um, each episode is dedicated to that, but there's two types of African elephants. Did you know that there are f- elephants called forest elephants? And it's in Africa. The first type of elephants that is probably the most popular and everybody's used to seeing are the savanna uh, elephants. The um, forest elephants have rounder shaped ears and their build and the way their legs and feet are different um, based on their, I guess, different living habitats. 
So I love the elephants. All right. So there's that show. Okay. Netflix. I think this is the best new show of the year. It is The Diplomat. And my husband and I finished it. There was a rainy weekend a couple weekends ago. We watched these eight episodes. It was so, so good. So gripping. Uh, Carrie Russell is the main character who is starting a new role as an American ambassador to the UK. And on her first day, like all hell breaks loose and something happens to um, a British a military ship, I think, or whatever. But anyway, it is. And and her husband has been an ambassador. So these two, this is like a power couple. He has been, he has a reputation of just being this outstanding ambassador and he's helping her transition into this role. It's just so good. So take a look at that. I just, I cannot say enough about the show, The Diplomat. It's really good. And I just found out they are renewed for a second season, which they better because there is a huge cliffhanger uh, at the end. So uh, check that out and let me know what you think about it. Okay. uh, Also on Netflix, I watched um, another K-drama. Surprise, surprise. It's called Cleaning with a Passion for Now. It's a really fun show to watch. It's from 2018, I think. And it's about a grandson of a powerful building development magnet that This grandson has uh, misophobia, which is an extreme fear of germs. And he's, I think, kind of like in his late 20s, um, early 30s. And he started a cleaning business. So a college age woman gets hired by his cleaning company. And she is everything that this CEO guy has phobias of. (laughs) And yet he is intrigued by her. And as in most K-dramas, there are layered storylines and characters. There's like really fun comedy uh, and the characters are very endearing, which makes this another great show. And uh, guess what? No serial killers in this one, for sure. (laughs) Ah, but don't worry. There's a serial killer in the next show I'm going to talk about. All right. PBS and Prime. There is a show um on and there's certain seasons i think prime has most of the seasons and pbs might have the most recent season it's called the unforgotten and it's a british show from which started the first season in 2015 and uh the last season might have been in 2021 uh but it is a crime detective show where two detectives solve cold cases with new evidence A well-known actress, Nicola Walker, is the DCI. She is one of my favorite uh, British actresses. She's very good. And each season, you would recognize her too, by the way, if you watch a lot of uh, BBC type shows. Um, And each season, the the seasons are short. There's probably, they're probably only like four episodes long, Um, but it's about solving a single case. And there is a season with a serial killer cold case. And it will blow your mind, I'm telling you. And the show is, um, it's not, it doesn't show, focus on the gore and and all of that, like CSI type stuff. Uh, it, it really takes you through the process that the, these detectives go through to solve these crimes and going through, especially these old cases. So I found it really very, very interesting. Uh, so that is called The Unforgotten. Also on PBS, uh, oh my gosh, Marie Antoinette. I think I got through the fifth episode And I just stopped watching it. I might go back. I don't know. But I just had to take a break. It was trying so hard to be edgy and modern like Bridgerton. But it ended up being focused on just like the vulgar excess of Versailles with no real cohesive storyline. It was it's just like all of this gratuitous, you know, 
I don't know, flamboyant stuff about about what about the the lifestyles of the rich and famous at Versailles. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and of course, there's a bunch of avant garde costume scenes, which is great. I, I always love looking at the hairstyles and costumes from, you know, old older centuries. But I mean, come on, this really needs to have like a cohesive storyline. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and a lot of it, they really took liberty. There's a lot of liberty taken so you really got to take this show with a grain of salt and uh what you see is not really what happened fyi which for most bbc historic era shows they've normally kept to historical accuracy and this one is way off the rails so anyway that's marie antoinette i just wanted to let you know about a show that i really um started watching and didn't really like Okay, let's get into the main topic, simple summer decor. It feels like we just started the new year, yet half the year is all gone, and now we're approaching summer, which is really exciting to most. It's exciting to me too, but summer is not my favorite season because I don't like bugs and I don't like hot, humid weather. That's pretty much it. But I do love a warm, lazy, sunny afternoon outdoors. There's something about a soft, warm breeze and sunshine um, that really, I think, everyone loves. Uh, it's also a great time to change up the decor in your home and extend your living space outdoors if possible. I've already talked about outdoor spaces a lot in previous episodes, so this episode I'm going to talk about easy changes to your decor to lighten and brighten it up. Um, and so let's talk about, uh, there's some typical small changes like accent pillows on the sofa and chairs. However, you might want to think about looking at the room as a whole. And doing the summer decor in a theme like coastal is a popular one and or tropical, whether it's going to be like a fun, whimsical look for you or an elegant look that you're after. The big picture is a good starting point, because if you just start, you know, replacing throw pillows and then what do you do next? And then you start this and that. Then you wonder why something just seems off and it doesn't look cohesive. So before you start, just take a look um, at the big picture, figure out some sort of theme that you want, and um, and then start making your changes. So let's look at a coastal look. Pillows, area rug, accessories, plants, floral arrangements, and possibly you could do a quick change out or addition of window treatments. You can get as kitschy as you want or, you know, as posh and sophisticated as you want. This is your home. So remember to make it a happy place for you and your family, not what people are, you know, going to think, which I mean, saying that with a grain of salt, of course, you do want people to to think your home is beautiful. But I'm just talking about you don't have to copy magazine pages to the T. You can get inspiration from them. And also, if you have, you know, just some pieces that are dear to you that are family heirlooms or, or things that have been made, um, those are the things I'm talking about where sometimes people think, oh, well, I shouldn't put this out here. Um, and um, believe me, I, I have heard designers try to take that kind of stuff out of people's rooms. And it really, <laughs> it really just touches a nerve with me because people need to have their stories in the room. And uh, so anyway... It's what brings character and layers and depth to these rooms. I think that a showroom look just looks just like that. It's just 
a showroom and it has no story, no personality, just new stuff. All right. So let's start with this. Okay. We're talking, see, I got off on a little tangent there. (laughs) Uh, So the overall color theme for Coastal, think about dreamy blues like sea glass, teal, or classic navy blue. And sandy tones like tan, gold, khaki, uh, shades of white like oatmeal, cream, and crisp white if you're going to pair it with a navy. So this navy coastal theme is its own look. But if you're going to do the dreamy blue sea glass and bring in some sandy tones, that's another look. Um, Also, with either of these looks, you can bring in a touch of strong accent colors like red. Red would be a good one to to accent the navy blue and white. Um, Melon orange is really beautiful with the sea glass colors and sand. Soft pinks, whatever you like best. But remember, these strong accents are only added in small amounts, so don't be afraid of them. You're only going to just, you know, Bring them in in very little amounts, but they're going to make a strong impact. Area rug. If you have hard surface floors with area rugs, you can change out one or more of them for summer. Uh, It can be inexpensive polyurethane indoor-outdoor runners, kitchen sink rugs, foyer rugs. Those are easily swapped out for summery woven rugs or sisal. And typical resources for this would be Target, Ikea, Home Goods, Wayfair. Uh, so that is something to think about and start with. Also, slip covers for upholstery pieces in a summery, more lightweight color and fabric. I have been noticing that there's this a newer type of slip cover. It may not be new to you guys, but it was new to me when I was researching this, that there's a really easy way you can do this as a DIY because you can make, you can actually use a quilt if it's big enough for the sofa where you um, drape it over the back of it and you tuck it in at the seat and then it drapes over the front of the sofa as one part of it. And the rest of your sofa frames it, or you can do it big enough where it covers the whole sofa. But what I have seen is that a little frame of sofa on each side of this, let's say, quilt cover shows. Uh, So like I have a dark brown leather sofa, which is what would be considered neutral. And whatever color of quilt that I would put in there, that brown brown leather would frame it. And then for the arms, you would put two smaller quilt pieces um, over those arm parts. Uh, And I think those would tuck under the bigger quilt. So it kind of looks like a a one piece. But um, that is a really easy thing to achieve, I think, because big slip covers that... (laughs) It, it, they're much harder to make as a DIY and they can be expensive to get the ones that actually look right and look nice. Um, so that's a really good um, idea that you could take a look at. Uh, I have, I will have links to a lot of the stuff that I talk about here. Uh, so I did see this one quilted one that looked really cool. And uh, I know that a lot of you have stacks of quilts that you have made over the years. So maybe think about that, pulling out some of those. And if you have, you know, you could mix and match your quilts too if they're kind of in the same color families. Um, so don't be afraid to do that as well. Pillows. So again, the usual Target, Ikea, they're good sources for trendy summer decor like pillows. You don't have to invest a lot. Um, and you can easily change them out. If you invest in pillows with zipper enclosures, you can easily change out the covers seasonally and clean the covers that are being changed out. 
zipper and closure pillows are more expensive. And for obvious reasons, it takes a lot more labor to put in a zipper. Um, and it's not that easily found at the big box stores. But just be prepared to invest more in the zipper type of ready-made pillows. Or you can make your own, which are not very hard to make at all. When I specify pillows for my clients, I always specify a zipper enclosure. Uh, and a lot of times now, uh, workrooms will use the invisible zipper. And I will specify invisible zippers if I abs absolutely, you know, if the back of the pillow is going to be seen or wanted to be flipped over, that, that kind of thing. When you make your own pillows, you have more options to customize the fabric to your personal style than the ready-mades you see at the big box stores. Uh, you can look for home decor lines like Premier Prince, P. Kaufman, Rich Loom, Kravit, Pindler. Those are all home decor fabric lines. The fabrics are thicker, more dense, and um, they are coated with a Scotchgard like fabric protection uh, until you clean them. <laughs> and then that rinses it out. But for pillows, it's not so important for the fabric protection as it is for upholstery. And upholstery is not cleaned as often as, as pillows are. Usually, if it's a fabric upholstery, it really tends to get vacuumed a lot first and maybe cleaned, um, I don't know, once every... It depends on how it's used. Uh, but anyway... Just so you know, though, if you do have your upholstery cleaned, you will you will need to to re um, apply uh, fabric protection on it. You can spray it on, or um, we have a company locally here called Seal Master, and they will come out and clean upholstery, and then they will also reapply um, the fabric protection. If you want to see these fabrics in person, Joann's has home decor fabrics and they carry lines like Kravit and Robert Allen. They have small samples of them hanging up um, on rods. And then if you like uh, a fabric of those, then you have to place an order, like a special order for those fabrics to um, ship to the store where then you'll pick it up when it gets to the store. Um Online options, uh, onlinefabricstore.com is a good source for the home decor fabrics that I mentioned earlier. Premier Prince is one of my favorite ones. I actually made a um, shower curtain several years ago. I don't know, maybe it's been like seven years now, and it's still going strong, and it's been washed several times, and that was a Premier Prince uh, cotton linen blend. So that's the other thing. Home decor weight fabrics will... Uh, last longer than like a quilt weight fabric as far as wear and tear. Uh, home decor stuff probably does get a lot more use than um, let's say a quilt. I mean, you're like sitting on upholstery fabrics. Just think about that. You can use quilting fabrics. It's not to say that you cannot, and especially for pillows. Pillows can be made out of anything you want. If you're going to do upholstery stick to upholstery decor weight fabrics. Or some of these quilting companies will have canvas fabrics that are a heavier weight. They're still not a home decor weight, but they're definitely heavier weight than a typical quilting weight fabric. So you can look for those as well, canvas. So back to the Joann's, they have home decor fabrics um, and lines that they carry in stock. You'll see those big rolls of fabrics on the racks. Kelly Rippa has a line of in stock home decor fabrics that are kind of cute. Uh, so if you want something right away that you don't want to have to wait for and do special orders for, um, take a look at those. And a tip about zippers. If you buy a zipper to size, get one at least an inch or two longer than you think you're going to need. They can easily be cut down after sewing them to the pillow fabrics. But if you get one where you have to be precise on where you're sewing that zipper at and it gives you no wiggle room, it's going to be that much more frustrating to install the zipper. Uh, so always get one that's a little bit bigger. Number five zippers are a little bit wider 
and they're commonly used for home deck sewing. They're more heavy duty. And definitely if you're going to do like home deck uh, seat cushions, I would use the number five ones. But on pillows, you don't have to use that heavy weight of a zipper. Uh, you could use the number three one, which is like a dressmaker zipper. It's lighter, narrower, and easier to, to sew, especially if you do not sew with zippers often. Optional trims you can add to your custom-made pillows are piping or welt, which is made from your pillow fabric and strips wrapped around a cording. Fun trims like pom-poms and decorative tape will elevate your pillows even further, especially if you're making pillows in solid color fabrics. Decorative tape would just really look outstanding on those. And um, how would you apply decorative tape? Uh, if you have like an inch wide or more decorative tape, uh, you could just top stitch it in a mitered square um, on the pillow front. To, so you would sew that onto the pillow front piece before you start constructing the actual pillow. A pillow that has that kind of trim on it is um, automatically like a high-end pillow. And the fact that you made it, even better. All right, let's talk about accessories now. Summer scented candles is a must for me. I just love having candles actually for every season. The The scents just really, I don't know, it's just that whole aromatherapy thing. So I love the Aloha Orchid candles from Capri Blue. They're pricey, but they're worth it. And I can get like the medium size one. It will probably last the season. And then it'll be time to get like the fall, whatever apple scent that I like. And then I love the Fraser Fir and Firewood for winter. So those are my main scents. There's also another scent that's kind of a year round and it's called the Volcano. It's very popular and it's also so that at... Um, Anthropology. I ordered my candles this year directly from Capri Blue. So they have some sales going on. And in fact, we're really close to Mother's Day. And I do think they have a sale going on right now. Uh, I have a link to the Capri Blue website in the show notes. But just to see the difference between a candle like these, the cheaper candles usually have an unnatural synthetic scent. They're not strong enough to fill an entire room or more with um, a pleasant scent. And I've wasted too much money on inferior candles that ended up having weird scents um, and didn't smell like it smelled in the store um, before it was lit. And a wicks burned black smoke <laughs> And I, then I couldn't use them or gave up on them after their scents. You know, some of the candles, the scents totally disappear halfway through the candle. So now I've learned. I purchase much less amounts of candles and I invest in just these quality ones and only a few at a time per season. They have a lot of different scents. So this may not be your thing. The Aloha Orchid is gardenia and um, I think jasmine, which are two of my favorite flower scents. Gardenia has been a long time favorite of mine, but I know that that it might be a little too too flowery for some people. But don't worry, they have they have other scents for any anyone to love. But anyway, and by the way, of course, you know I'm not I am not affiliated with any of these companies that I talk about. I just love certain products, so I will talk about them because I do love them. Capri Blue is one of those. So summer scented candles are easy. It's an easy way to um, update a room. And also um, the Capri Blue candles have different uh, vessels. So there's mercury glass ones. There's you know, other colors and so forth. They have different styles, uh, which also 
adds and they makes them then an accessory to the room, um, which adds a lot to it. Bring in some real house plants. Even if you think you can't keep a plant, summer gives you a much higher chance of success because there's a lot more daylight, the air temperature is warmer, and even one real plant in a decorative pot would add so much freshness to a room. And if you don't want to do real, then go fake. But it just, the real ones, actually, they also improve air quality. They clean the air by removing harmful VOCs and gases. So it, it actually is, a you know, there's more than one good reason to get real plants into your home. Fresh floral arrangements. Uh, these do not need to be extravagant. I know fresh floral arrangements are expensive, uh, but they can just really be a simple bunch of, of single flower in a vase. Trader Joe's has great bunches of seasonal flowers for a really good price and you can just change those out here and there it adds so much to a room and again with a little light scent some of these might be scented um, it just picks up your day if you grow your own flowers um, sometimes you might forget to actually like you can cut them and bring them inside <laughs> and then do your own uh, fresh flower flower arrangement uh, peonies roses zinnias dahlias and greenery like eucalyptus. So I'm growing eucalyptus for the first time. I hope it works out. But eucalyptus is commonly used in fancy floral arrangements as greenery with the flowers. Uh, the gomfrina flowers that I grow, uh, they're great for um, indoor cut flower arrangements. And they're, they're textured, they're colorful, and then they also can be dried for beautiful arrangements or wreaths. So those gomfrina flowers are very flexible. Uh, you could do a lot with those. Here's a note about decorating with accessories in general. It's all about layering and balance. Vary the heights of your accents. You don't want everything at the same height. So layer a variety of accents in what I call vignettes, which is just like a little section of somewhere. So a little section of a foyer table or um, the top of, let's say, a sideboard in the dining room or a vignette can be on your uh, kitchen or dining table. So that's what I mean about by vignettes. So when you design these little vignettes, also it kind of takes away the added I guess, uh, overwhelmingness of, you know, working on these rooms. If you kind of like narrow it down to a small um, section to accessorize, I think you'll find it a lot easier to create a vignette. You could have layer a variety of accents like books laying flat with a decorative accent on top. It could be a candle. Uh, it could be... Um, a vase with flowers. You can um, put a tray on an ottoman with large coffee table book or a couple of books stacked, an arrangement of candles on a tray, a small floral on a top of a stack of books. For height, use tall lanterns that hold candles or taper candles grouped. Uh, grouping things is a good a good thing to do as well. Uh, they make a statement. And also a lamp paired with your shorter height accents is a great, makes a great vignette or a sculpture. So go shopping around your house and see what you've got and um, play around with it. And then you can add in uh, what you think you, you will need um, and you can go to, you know, Target Home Goods or whatever and get whatever you want to add to it. Lower height items could be a decorative bowl filled with a bunch of the same thing, like decorative balls or fruits, 
They could be faux fruits or real. I know that Kristen Esser mentioned making these little cross-stitched pillows. They're very mini size and filling up a bowl with those. Beautiful. That is such a great idea. So you can put anything in a bowl and make it a beautiful decorative accent, a centerpiece um, on a table. Uh, so, and, and any, you know, uh, another, like a term in the floral industry and design is vessel. So anything can be a vessel that you can fill with decorative items. All right, let's talk about window treatments. If you've got simple draperies, like broad pocket panels that are stationary, um, you know, they're just hanging on the sides of your windows to soften the room. You can change those out with summer ones. I would do heavier weight ones for the fall, winter, and lighter unlined linen panels for the summer months. My living room draperies are more of a permanent fixture, so you may you. It depends. You're going to have to look and see how 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 the window treatments are in your house. If you've had window treatments professionally made and installed, then don't even think about it. This is actually just an idea for some DIY uh, swap outs. Other rooms of mine can use an update. There's a link that I have in the show notes for Pottery Barn classic Belgian linen drapery panels. I would, if you're going to go with, um, and this is not even, let's just take a time out here. This is for all seasons. So if you actually need to just add window treatments, period, for year round, and you're, you're interested and you want to uh, try out these um, linen draperies, I would stay away from the Amazon ones. I would go with these actual Belgian linen draperies. And Pottery Barn has a nice selection and the price points are good. They're not crazy. But they're good and and also remember it's an investment. These Belgium linen drapery panels from Pottery Barn are Belgium linen, good quality. They're lined with cotton lining and they have three ways you can hang them. You can hang them as a rod pocket and rod pockets generally are um, best for stationary hanging drapery panels, which means that they aren't going to close um, over the whole window. They're just going to stay on the sides. If you're going to close them, then then you would want to hang them with rings. Then the third way that they have to hang them, which is my least favorite way, is they've got hanging loops, like tap tops. You can also order these by um, increments of inches, which gets you pretty close to a custom um, drapery treatment without the enormous cost of it. And also, just keep in mind, 100% linen grows, which means that as it hangs, the fibers relax and they can stretch or grow a few inches. This is only for 100% linen, and it's just the natural part of these fibers. Just uh, remember that. If you're doing linen blends, they're not so prone to grow or stretch. I don't mind the stretching or growing. I mean, I, I hemmed my linen panels in my office when I first installed them, um, and, and they they stretched. So now they're kind of like breaking onto the floor, which is fine. Um, I'm just, I'm not so picky about that, but some people... Um, have definite preferences. So if you have a preference where you want to see a perfect line above that floor, then uh, 100% linen is not for you. Get a blend. Think about layering soft sheer curtains behind drapery panels in a bedroom, a nursery, or really anywhere. I do have a link for these cute sheer um, they're polyester sheer panels on Amazon. They are uh, trimmed with little pom-pom trim on each side of the drapery panel. And I saw this actually on YouTube uh, and a person had those shears in their bedroom. And when uh, she pulled them back, she had the linen panels in front of them and the sheer, she this is a beautiful way to do it. You you layer the sheer behind that linen panel 
um, and you can pull it back together uh, and it is almost like a trim on the linen panel. It layers beautifully and then you can let the shear down and it covers the whole window. These shears you want actually to be functional. You want to be able to close them to the center of your window and then you can open them um, if you want during the day and pull them back. And then the stationary linen panels, of course, just stay stationary. And that's another layer. These panels are so inexpensive. They're under $30. And I would just say, give it a try. There's Now, there are, are very limited lengths. So you may need to hem or deal with a shorter length. But if it's layered behind another window treatment, it, it's not that big of a deal unless it's actually the main treatment. I think over the past decade, it's been a trend to do only flat Roman shades on windows or nothing at all, like leaving the windows bare. And then the ever cliche statement of, I don't want to hide the view. We don't need privacy. You know, mostly when I heard this, it was, um, you know, working with clients that this is a a response to the shock of what custom window treatments cost. And I totally get that. But newsflash, drapery panels that open and close do not hide the view. In fact, Roman shades block more of the window when they're fully raised than drapery panels are pulled back. Roman shades stack, and that means when they are raised, the fabric has to go somewhere. And it folds every four to six inches, depending on the window length, is how big the stack can get. And the the length of that stack of fabric can be over a fifth of the window or more. Think about that when considering window treatments. I mean, I love Roman shades. They're great. I, I want to make a couple. I've made some for our library office. They're beautiful. I love them. We just raise and lower them, but I don't have like a thing of, oh my gosh, every single inch of my window glass has to be clear. You you kind of want like the tops of your, your windows covered a little bit because it covers up all of those like windowy uh, mechanisms and stuff. And it makes for a really much prettier um, look. Back to these shears. These shears give you a little bit of privacy and at least it creates shadows and like people actually can't see right in and see everything in detail in your room. And I don't know. I, I mean, I guess it's because I'm a city person and, um, you know, there's no such thing as privacy. <laughs> You have to cover your windows. Uh, you're usually facing a street or a neighbor. And even in the suburbs where people think that they have full privacy, you don't know. You never know who's out there. I don't know. I mean, like, again, it's, this is more of a city thought, but there are those organized criminals that case homes and if they can see right inside your home and see your big flat screen TV and all your audiovisual components, you know, it's much that much easier for them to uh, to do their their crimes. But anyway, I don't want to like scare people, but I it's just what I think about. So even if you're in the middle of nowhere, I would still want at least a sheer closed at nighttime or a shade of some sort. Be safe and cover those windows at night instead of looking out onto pitch darkness and not knowing what could be looking in at you. Let's get off these window treatments and look at kitchen decor updates. The usual table linens, table runner, and table decor like a centerpiece bowl filled with fruit or something you made like I talked about earlier. Dish towels and oven mitts, aprons, all of those things can be switched out with more summery patterns and colors and um, it, even your dish and hand soap and summer scents. I, for the first time, got since I went to this Capri Blue website because anthropology doesn't sell everything from Capri Blue. And so I noticed that they have hand soap 
So I decided to try it. They sell this hand soap on Amazon as well. They also, on the Capri Blue website, you can then order refill hand soap, which I like a lot. I like that you don't have to keep buying the little hand soap container. Also, I just got this soap yesterday and it is a beautiful soap dispenser. It is blue glass and um, the pump is is nice, uh, a nice quality. I replaced, um, you know, I used to have a subscription to Grove and I got some of their glass uh, soap dispensers um, and the glass part is fine, but the dispenser part was very cheap and not good quality and the soaps would oxidize where it turned the soap brown at the front part of the soap pump and so I really didn't like that uh so yeah I switched that out and uh I got the Aloha Orchid scent of course I probably will get another soap dispenser for um another bathroom and I think I'm gonna do the volcano scent because that's a really nice fresh um, citrusy fruity scent that would actually be really great in the kitchen as well all of this is just to give you a sense of renewal and freshness for the new season and it's fun and exciting and um, just kind of lifts your spirit uh, also I mean even the dish sponges come in summer colors <laughs> so think about all of these little tiny changes add up and can create a complete transformation of your kitchen. Teapots, kettles, napkins, melamine dishes are big. I mean, there are some gorgeous melamine plates and bowls and everything and even drinking cups. So melamine dishes are a great way to infuse summer into the season. All right, let's move on to the bathroom. Do you need a break? I know this is running long, so go ahead and pause refill your tea, coffee, or wine. And when you get back, we'll begin again on bathrooms. Welcome back. That feels so much better, right? All right, let's get back into bathrooms. Towels, rugs, and shower curtains are easy things to switch out and make a huge impact. Uh, again, like the soap dispensers I talked about, if you have a little decorative ceramic tray, you know, the back part of your toilet, like I do, that's where I have that little peony flower arrangement. You could switch those out. And a DIY thing you can do is um, you can really kind of jazz up your hand towels by sewing on decorative ribbon about two inches above the hem, or even some towels have that... Uh, uh, inset band, which is a perfect spot for trim. And it's pretty quick and easy just to, to top stitch those on. Uh, and then it's, it, it just, when you add these custom details to anything, towels, pillows, it, it just, it becomes you. It makes your room one of a kind. Bedroom, of course, bedding and pillows, decorative accessories, bring in fresh flowers and plants. So those are just the typical things for bedrooms. Other than that, I mean, I don't think you're going to switch out much else um, unless you're going to change the paint color. And uh, definitely, if you don't have window treatments, think about just even putting up um, those shears with the pom-pom trim from Amazon up and see. They give a very soft diffusion to the daylight, and they soften up the room, and they make it cozy. So especially a bedroom is a great place to try sheer drapery panels. How about mudrooms? You can uh, definitely change out your rugs or add a rug. Also, change out the wall decor. You can frame photos in color, painted frames, or a beach washed style frame. Yeah, it's just little tiny changes in a mudroom that you can make for the changing seasons. I think the rug is probably going to make the biggest impact. And let's talk a little bit about wall decor. Uh, anything that holds special meaning to you, whether you found a treasure from a thrift shop or framed photos, hang them, you know, hang wall decor everywhere. It's really amazing what a little wall decor does for a room. You can mix architectural things in a grouping of 
framed photos or artwork, uh, like a mirror or um, a corbel or candle sconce, and then hang pictures around it that makes a nice vignette (laughs) on the wall. Or just, you know, hang one larger artwork. Uh, There's many online sites where you can get prints of famous artwork and then um, just frame it in a frame of your choice. Um, and, uh, if it's not, if, if you see a frame that you love, but it's not offered in a finish that you like, you could easily paint that frame with metallic paint. Let's say there's a vintage brass color. That's really nice from Michael's and, uh, it's a close match to the real deal. Uh, and anything vintage in metallic is going to be much softer and not so striking um unless you're modern you know if you're definitely minimalist modern you might like a chrome a shiny chrome or a shiny polished nickel that's different than you can can do or you might like a matte black um which matte black is very popular so you won't even need to repaint a frame because a lot of them are available in that finish right now because that's what's popular i saw a cool idea on youtube there is a printer paper that is like art canvas. And uh, it is, uh, I have a link to this, but it's 100% real printable cotton. And you can print royalty free or whatever non copyright artwork from the internet and print it on there and frame it. And it looks like the real deal. And you could do this with photographs, you could, you know how you can have that watercolor look, if you use a Photoshop on a photo, that would look really great. I mean, it is stunning. And these are just little projects that you can do on your own. And um, I know for me, the, one of the things is the time. You just have to make the time to do it. And sometimes I don't do that. But um, after, you know, re kind of uh, delving into all of this for this episode, it really kind of got my um, decorative juices going for these wall decor ideas. Um, And I think I even am going going to try the white um, sheer pom pom panels uh, in one of the one of my rooms. So um, thinking about it, I've got to look at the big picture, right? (laughs) And finally, What do you want to let the pros do for you? You're not going to want to do everything, maybe. Uh, I mean, you really have to enjoy your summer too, right? Uh, And there are some tasks and things that certain people love to do, like painting walls in a house, which I don't really love to do. And there are other things that they don't like to do. Let's talk about some of these. Yeah, like I just said, interior or exterior painting. Um, If you hire a pro, they are quick. They can get a room painted within a day or two, and it's a major transformation of that room. It can be expensive, but worth it if you have it in your budget. Uh, And all of these, like, you know, things that you could um, hire a pro to do, I've kind of put some dollar signs on there to give you an idea you know like how maybe Yelp does that so we're on a five dollar sign scale one being the least expensive and five being the most so interior exterior painting by a pro would probably be a three dollar sign to four dollar sign depending on where you live Uh, painting is very expensive around here in the Chicago area professional painting Reupholstery of large items like sofas and lounge chairs, I would give that a $3 sign. It doesn't have to be that expensive, again, depending on where you live. Um, And uh, alert, alert, designer secret. Some upholsterers will make accent pillows for you, especially if you are having a piece of furniture reupholstered. They may not just take a pillow order, but... If you are going to get another piece reupholstered, you can have your accent pillows made by them and they will be less expensive than, um, let's say, uh, a designer workroom, drapery workroom. 
The only thing is they're not going to do fancy trims, flanges, things like that. These upholstery shops make, you know, they reupholster and they make pillows for sofas and chairs out of, you know, either the same fabric or an accent fabric. They will self welt the pillows, which means they will um, have a piping trim around the pillow in either the same fabric as the pillow or you could do a contrast fabric uh, and they will do a, a decorative cord trim. That's about the extent that you're going to get from an upholsterer. But it's a nice little secret that if you have simple pillows that you don't want to make and you are getting something reupholstered, you can ask your upholsterer about that. Faux flower arrangements, which I mentioned earlier, if you don't want to do these on your own, Etsy has many sellers of beautiful faux flower arrangements. And um, just remember, this is an investment because the flowers never die and can be used for seasons or years. If you want a beautiful, realistic looking arrangement, you're going to need to invest probably around $100, $150 for the arrangement, which um, I don't know, that's probably like a $2 sign thing here. Um it's a pretty fair price, although I, I know that it, it it's expensive still. But um, if they're using quality materials, uh, I've got a link to a top seller, and there is a gorgeous pink tulip arrangement in a cylinder glass. Uh, it's got like that look of the water in it that's permanent uh, in a cylinder glass vase. That's probably around in that $100, $150 range. But remember, the components that make up the price is materials of flowers, the vessel, the labor that goes into making it, photographing it, loading it up onto their Etsy shop. And um, in, so that's all encompassed in, in that price. Uh, so when you think, oh my gosh, that's, that's just ridiculous, too expensive. Well, it's not like you're just getting, you know, faux flowers from Michael's. You're actually getting a whole finished, beautiful arrangement, uh, that could be used for years. Um, so think about that if you're going to want to make the investment and really it's a fair price because they can go a lot higher like 300 to thousands of dollars. Check out Etsy. You know, in comparison, I'll tell you, there, there is this really posh, high-end faux flower company that designers use called NDI. And a flower arrangement from there is around $1,000 for a simple flower arrangement. Yes, I know, it sounds absurd. That is a $5 <laughs> resource. Um, they are mostly just to the trade. Um, but I actually do have a small that one in my bathroom, the small peony floral from NDI that I'm still using 10 years after I've purchased it. It wasn't a thousand dollars. But um, with my trade price, it, it was probably around $50, which was worth the investment for me. I mean, it's a, it's a petite, tiny arrangement. There is one peony flower with one peony bud. Uh, so, um, but yeah, if you see NDI, uh, I would probably like, you look in the other direction, <laughs> unless you have all of the dollars to spend, then hey, it's, it's, they're really beautiful and they're very high quality. Wallpaper installers is another pro you can use. If you wallpaper a small space like a foyer or a powder room, this can be easily done by a professional wallpaper installer and not cost the sun, moon, and stars like wallpaper installations tend to cost. So you can think about that. But there are some people that love to do wallpaper themselves, which is wonderful. Plus, now there are those uh, peel and stick wallpapers. So consider that too for maybe a change in the seasons. And if you want to um, do your foyer, because um, the peel and stick just comes right off. 
drapery workroom and installation of shades, window shades and window treatments. That's another pro that you can uh, leave your window treatments up to. So it just depends on your preference and what you want to DIY and make and what you want to leave to the pros. Window treatments are something that is definitely kind of up there, like with reupholstery of the large pieces. Um, If you can have a professional install them, it's great. Uh, But if not, then simplify your window treatments to projects that are um, conducive to being self-DIY installed. And finally, landscaping services. Uh, Some people don't like to garden. And uh, so you can, you know what, you can hire TaskRabbit to just plant some of your summer flowers if you want, and and it's not a huge investment. Uh, Or if you've been planning a landscape service for a while, then a landscaping service is a good way to go. Let the pros do it. They plan it all out. And landscaping projects are typically like a long-term type thing. So you're making this investment once um, to to have um, your outdoors landscaped. But just for simple gardening tasks, uh, and if you don't want to do it on your own, then maybe maybe hire a task rabbit for that. Or or have a niece or nephew or your kids help you out. That's a good way too. In summary, there are a lot of simple things you can make and DIY for an amazing transformation of your home to a summer oasis. Simple change out of accent pillows, throw quilts and blankets and bedding can completely change the environment and feel fresh and happy to you. You don't have to DIY everything. Some people love to paint. They save a lot on professional painting services. Um, but again, like I said earlier, maybe they don't like to garden. They can spend a little on Task Rabbit to plant flowers for them. Uh, One thing to remember is DIY the things you enjoy to do and contract out the stuff you don't like to do. Or if you're me (laughs) with no contractor budget, wait years for your husband to please paint the kitchen. I know it's not that difficult a task, so I might need to suck it up and start painting myself. Um, Really, painting walls is not, (laughs) it's, it's not like something you can't do. So it's just something I don't, it's weird. I just don't like to do it. I think it's just like a whole to do, you know, you got to get out the, the, you know, painting tarps or whatever, drop cloths and all the prep work and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so actually, uh, my husband has, uh, prepped and primed, most of the walls in the kitchen still has a bit more to do. So then I could just start painting because that is actually an ideal situation for me. If someone does all that prep work and then puts the primer on, then it's so much easier just to like do the actual paint color and it's a lot more fun. I know it's the fun part of the job. (laughs) The other thing is when I think about stuff that I don't like to do as much is that It takes away time from my sewing, quilting, knitting, gardening, cricketing time, right? Oh, make our dilemmas, right? This brings us to the end of the episode and to the end of season five of the Make and Decorate with Stephanie podcast. This was really a great season, and I want to thank all of the guests who took the time to come onto my show. Thank you so much. And thank you listeners for listening uh, and helping this show grow. If you have topics or guest suggestions for future podcast episodes, please let me know. Email me info at makeanddecorate.com. If you want to keep the podcast going and receive new episodes year round, consider joining my Patreon membership at patreon.com slash make and decorate. Oh, I almost forgot too. on Saturday. The sixth is the coronation of King Charles the third. This is so historic and the only one 
in my lifetime that I will ever see. And I I have all I have the BBC um and like three other channels set to record the coronation which in my time zone coverage starts at 4 a.m. So I will be watching some of this and uh congratulations to all of you UK people. It's a it's a wonderful historic time for you. Have a wonderful summer, everyone, and don't be shy. Stay in touch and let me know if you have made DIY stuff for your home or just to say hi. DM me on Instagram at stephanie.socha.design or info at makeanddecorate.com is my email. Always keep making and decorating. Bye-bye. If you love the Make and Decorate with Stephanie podcast, check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash make and decorate. You'll get a bonus episode every month, even during the months that the show is on hiatus. Thanks for listening, and I will chat with you next time. Bye-bye.